All right, guys. Well, I'm recording this video the night before. I'm going to post it tomorrow from my perspective. It'll be the night before from your perspective. Um, you know, we've had a lot of, a couple of really high-profile mass shootings here in the last few days, and it really shocks people when things like this happen. It it, it strikes a chord with people. It it, it hits you at home. Um, I live 20 minutes away from the Sutherland Springs Church where the, that, that mass shooting happened. Um, I actually have friends that knew people that were there. Um, it was We were at our church when that shooting happened. It was actually in process, in progress, while we were stepping outside of our church. Um, and you know, when you're close to something like that, when you know people that are involved in something like that, it gets your attention. But let's put this in perspective, because one mass shooting or even a couple of mass shootings doesn't really put things in perspective. Like when they had the sh shooting at Las Vegas, you know, it was terrible. I personally know people that were involved in that. But let's put it in real perspective, in real terms of what's really going on, because you can't trust the media to tell you anything. You have to dig into the details to find out what's really happening. And what's really happening is far worse than what any news media or anyone else will tell you. Now, I'm reading in CBS News. This is an article by Jason Silverstein, and it was put in, uh, posted August 5th, 2019. The amount of mass shootings across the U.S. so far in 2019 has outpaced the number of days this year. According to a gun violence research group, they're, they're known as the GVA, the Gun Violence Archive. This, um, this puts 2019 on pace to be the first year since 2016 with an average of more than one mass shooting a day. Since we're only barely seven months in, I venture a guess it's probably gonna almost double that number because of the way things are going. As of August 5th, which was the 217th day of the year, there have been 255 mass shootings in the U.S. Now, very interesting to note, this is mass shootings. This is an individual gun violence. Mass shootings is classified as uh, where four people are, are killed or injured, not counting the shooter. Um... According to data from the nonprofit Gun Violence Archive, uh, which tracks every mass shooting in the country, the GVA defines a mass shooting as any incident in which at least four people were shot, excluding the shooter. The total of 255 mass shootings include five high-profile massacres in the past eight days, in which more than 100 people have been shot. <coughs> some of these you've heard of, some you haven't. A shooting in a historic district of Dayton, Ohio with nine people killed and 27 injured. A shooting at Walmart in El Paso, Texas, with 22 people killed and at least 24 wounded. In fact, I've got a friend over there. I need to contact him because I did not think about it. He might have been involved in that. Uh, that's the, that was the deadliest shooting this year. A shooting at the Gilroy Garlic Festival in the San Francisco Bay Area where three people, <coughs> with three people killed and 15 injured. A shooting at a Brooklyn block, block of Brooklyn block party with one person killed and 11 injured. A shooting at a Walmart in South Haven, Mississippi with two people killed and two injured. As I'm doing this video, there actually was another one stopped in Lubbock, Texas over the last two days where the guy had already had it planned, had a motel room, had the weapons, the ammo, he was ready to go and they just barely caught him and stopped him from doing anything. And another one in Chicago that unfolded at a park or a barbecue or something where several people were shot. That one, these, this, these two just happened in the last couple of days. Before the El Paso attack, the deadliest mass shooting of 2019 happened in a municipal building in Virginia Beach, where a former city employee killed 12 people and injured four. The GVA said that there have been 33,237 total shooting incidents, resulting in 8,796 gun deaths and 17,480 injuries as of Monday afternoon this month. That's just for 2019 so far. A 
That's terrible. But you won't hear those numbers in, in most places. The last time the mass shooting toll top days of the year was 2016, which had 382 mass shootings, the most in any year since the Gun Violence Archive started keeping track. The past two years came close, with 346 mass shootings in 2017 and 340 in 2018. So it is very important to keep all of this in perspective and to understand that we can't control other people. We can't control the outcome of most situations. This is where faith in our Lord comes in. This is where trusting in Jesus comes in. And we know as, as children of God, we know as followers of Christ, that no matter what happens, whether we're killed or not killed, everything works out for good. Because if we're killed, we know we go, get to go be with the Lord. We don't get killed. We're here, we're here to help people. We're here to preach the gospel and share the good news and try to maybe lead people to salvation. But this is a great example because these numbers are staggering. This year looks to top. I've done several videos now about the mass animal dives, the volcanic eruptions, the earthquakes. This year is going to top anything we've ever seen before in history. Go read Psalms 119. Telling you, it, it blow your mind. All the, it's the longest psalm in the entire book. And look at all the stuff that's happening this year. It's unprecedented. Anyone, even any professional, will tell you that what's going on th this year is unprecedented. Precedent. But let's keep this in perspective. This happens. This is the way the world has been. It's gotten really bad, especially after two thousand eight. It's really picked up pace and gotten bad. Um, our social climate changed at that time. Um, a lot of scary things started happening. A lot of opinions and a lot of ideals changed during that time. Uh, a moral code was destroyed in most people. And we're seeing the after effects of that now. Um, the ball is rolling. The snowball has been pushed down the hill, proverbially speaking. And it is gaining speed. And it's we know what it's ultimately culminating into. It's culminating in the tribulation the Great Tribulation mentioned in the Bible. And uh, right before that will be the rapture of the church. We can't control the outcome of these things. Now, we can be a factor in them. You know, if we're in the right place at the right time and properly prepared, we can be a defender for the innocent, those who cannot defend themselves. And that's what we need to prepare ourselves mentally and physically for. If there's a way that you can defend somebody, by all means, as a Christian, step in. That, that, that's the greatest love anyone can show. Jesus says, greater love has no man than this, that he give his life for his friends. As Christians, that's what we do. We see somebody that needs to be, you know, something's about to unfold, get in between those people. Block that person. I, if I ever find myself in a situation like that, I'm going to, it's going to take a whole lot of bullets to put me down, but I'm going to do everything I can to try to stop that guy. I'm going to fall on him. I'm 280 pounds of crushing weight. I'm going to fall on him and try to pin him down before I die. Because my chances are high, I'm probably going to die. But if I can save a few lives, then it'll be worth it. Because then these people get to go on. Then my story gets to be told, and it may lead people to Christ. But the thing is, if we stand in the shadows, and we watch these things unfold, like most people want to whip their phone out and film it, instead of getting involved in doing something, what good are we? We know these things are going to happen. We're prepared. Some, some of y'all, we were talking earlier about this. You know, whether you can own a firearm or not, there's other ways to learn how to do things. You know, a, a pack of cupcakes in a Walmart can become a great distraction. You can flip that thing at somebody, hit them in the face. They have to block it. And when they do, you rush them. And you knock that weapon out of their hands and you take them out. Learn how to do a good chokehold. Learn how to escape a chokehold if there is a way to do it. Um, a bottle, a 20-ounce bottle of soda. Makes a great weapon. You chuck that thing at somebody's head, it's going to hurt if it hits them. Um, you know, anything. Anything you can do that can possibly stop and become a hard target so that person who thinks he's got an easy target, because they're all cowards. All these guys that do these things are all cowards, every one of them. There's not a brave bone in their body. That's why they use these weapons and go and take out crowds that they deem soft targets. Don't be a soft target. Whether you have a weapon or not, don't be a soft target. Do everything you can to keep that person from being able to unload that magazine. 
And if it's chucking sodas and candy, bags of candy and whatever you can get your hands on at them, do it. Throw it. Throw your purse, throw your shoes, whatever you have to do. And as you're throwing them, keep advancing on that person. You will cause them to second guess themselves. That's all you need. Two seconds. Two seconds is enough time for you to get in there and completely disarm the situation. Watch YouTube videos. Practice these things. You know, get a plan down so if you are, by some chance, involved in that situation, you can react without thinking. The guy in Sutherland Springs, he lived around the corner. He heard the pops. He, he's trained. He was an NRA a trainer. He knows what those sounds were. His daughter came in and said, Dad, that's at the church. He ran out there. He dealt with the problem. He saw the target. He dealt with the target. By the grace of God, evidently those people needed to go home, but by the grace of God, that weapon jammed. That's the only reason. So a lot of people don't know aspects of that story. I live here. That weapon jammed. He wasn't able to fully unload that clip. He threw it down and went to his truck for a pistol. That gave that man the opportunity to take all the fight out of him. And he did. And what he do, was just like a coward, instead of fighting, he ran. And he ran and he died. His family is now in hiding because of all that stuff. Do what you can to get in between these things. We know it's just going to keep getting worse up until the time everything ends. It'll get worse and it'll get worse and it'll get worse. And you, you, you'll have to use discernment on how you're going to address the situation. Not every situation requires a direct attack. Sometimes you can, maybe you can talk them down. But you gotta, you got to let the Lord lead you on that one. But keep your eyes open. Protect your wife, your kids, your husband, whoever's in your life. Guard them with information. Give them understanding and knowledge and help them to know. If you have you know, adult children, teach them how to use a firearm. Teach them how to clear a jam. Teach them you know, where, where to aim. Chest, don't aim for the head, chest. Everybody thinks they're good at headshots. No, you're not. Trust me, I used to do weapons training. You're not good at headshots. Chest only. Chest immobilizes the target. You when, when you get him to stagger or get whoever that is to slow down for a minute, you can rush at him and then you can put one in their head point blank range and drop them clean. But even if it's you have to use a weapon, a baseball bat, a club, something, whatever it takes to, to stop that person and keep them from taking any more lives necessary. If you lose your life, you know you're going to be with the Lord. It's not a negative for you, but with the way the world is, we are really, honestly, we are, those of us who choose to go ahead and step up like that, we're the only defense this world and our society has. They have, they have nothing else because nobody else will step up. The shooting that happened in Florida, all those kids at that high school and the cops didn't even go in the building. They didn't even enter the building to stop the problem. They stood out there and listened to those kids get killed. If we can't even trust most of our law enforcement, some can, some of them are good, but if we can't trust our law enforcement, we have to become the law enforcement. We have to stand up for what's right. It's an unfortunate circumstance of this world, but the Bible told us this was going to happen. And we see these things unfolding before us. So you have to, you have to make a judgment call between you, between you and yourself. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to get involved in? I haven't had a chance to get involved in those things. There was a couple of instances where some certain situations were stopped beforehand, but I haven't been in a situation like that, an active shooter situation. Pretty close. But if it comes down to it, you got to ask yourself, what am I willing to do? And if you're not willing to get involved, you need to make sure you get on top of somebody and protect them in a situation like that. But you got to think about these things. It sucks. It's terrible, but it's just the reality of our world. You got to think about these things and have a plan ready. So when something happens, you react instantly. There's no thinking about it. You react and you deal with the situation. It's easier when you have military training, but every person, no matter what kind of training you have, you can react and you can do something. If you can even protect one person and save one life, you've done something good. Not like most people that just go around and hide. People run off and leave their own kids in these situations. Not, not even attempting to try to help. The little girl at Yellowstone, like there was like 10 other people there. They just ran off and left her. That buffalo could have killed that little girl. So it's an unfortunate thing, but this is how this world is going to unfold. And it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. So 
let's redeem the time. Let's prepare in here and in here, you know, for what's coming and save as many as we can. I love you guys. I thank you all for watching. I bless you all in Jesus name and I will see you guys in the next video.